a special broadcast of a special announcement to clarify the situation in the capital city, Honiara, this fellow time now. Hello, Solomon Islanders and visitors to Solomon Islands. At exactly 400 hours this morning, local time, elements of the Royal Solomon Islands Police Paramilitary Force with the assistance of two platoons of the Malayda Eagle Force stormed and took control of our country's main police armories. By 5 a.m. the operation was over and complete. Acting on the instructions of the joint operation leaders, a letter was handed to the Prime Minister this morning asking him to resign within 48 hours. If he does, Parliament shall be asked by the relevant authority to convene to allow for the election of a new Prime Minister and thereafter the formation of a new government. We were just walking down to catch a bus to work and they said, oh no, you can't go to work. Why? Oh, the um, uh, country or has been held ransom, so nobody's going to work. Three halacks of militants approached me on the, on the road. One of the boys slapped me with the butt of the gun on my back and I fell to the ground. And that was when they started beating me up. When they came, I have to hide my children in the house. I take one of my sons and hide him under the bed, cover the bed, I take another girl and I put him her in the cupboard, close the cupboard, and I take the baby granny, two years old. I lay her on the bed where even they come, they can kill her because she's a baby. So I have to stand at the door and prepare to meet this man who is coming. I don't worry about me dying, but I worry about the children. As long as I save the children, it's my aim. Women and children are basically the groups that uh, suffered the most during those uh, times. And, you know, when you have the, 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 the weapon with you, what I call gun culture, you, you seem to have no boundaries. You just want to do anything that you, you want. My father was the first Prime Minister of Solomon Islands, uh, led Solomon Islands through the independence process. It was a very um, time for great concern and um, worry, uh, particularly for somebody like him. I could see him um, already uh, in the evenings just sitting there and listening to a news item and being lost in it. And you could see he's thinking about, my goodness, where is this thing going? That kind of thing. I think for us it was um, not that heavy because we had never experienced something like that. Uh, we were quite young, very optimistic at that time. But it dawned on me once when I saw um, um, a whole lot of people in fatigue uniforms drive across town, uh, openly holding arms uh, in the back of their pickup. And I was like, what is, what is going on? And then you hear the news like, oh, they're going to defend uh, West Honiara against an invasion from the Guadalcanal Revolutionary Army at the time, I think it was called. Um, so that was when it sort of hit me uh, quite heavily, like, so this is real. I think, I think this is something that's really happening. During the tensions that uh, some actually came in here when we, uh, when they heard some stories that probably related to them, they, they come in and then say, they question us, what? Why did you tell that story? Why do you put that story on air? But we just say that, well, basically, that's what we know and what we see. And the country needs to know what's happening. So although there are pressure outside, but uh, we really try to do what we are supposed to do. Ordinary people in particular were very frustrated with uh, the inability of the government to stop the violence. 
and the availability of guns in the community, which made some young people, many in fact, many young people uh, become quite violent. Uh, and so a lot of people have had, prior to Ramsey coming in, hoped that somebody from outside would come in and help the Solomons because it was obvious by then uh, that it, the ability of the government to stop the violence uh, wasn't there. People were convinced that we need help from outside and, and we later on Ramsey came in. I think a, pe a lot of people were really happy about that. When the decision was made by the Australian government that, you know, they will support a strong regional engagement, you know, to help Solomons to come out of this problem, to me, it's a, it's a real blessing for our country. Put aside all the critical thinking that everybody might have about it. It's the benefit that this country has got out of it, outweighs all those and it can be well quantified as well. It can be well quantified. Because Ramsey is really here under the Bikatawa Declaration, uh, it's become a very practical example of what can be done under the Declaration. The, the, you know, the concept being of the regional countries uh, collectively helping out one of their own members uh, when asked. So the forum leaders uh, basically uh, through a series of meetings and consultations, including foreign ministers, um, decided uh, that it was really, I suppose, time for the region to have a mechanism where they could uh, assist uh, in, in such events. And so at the, their meeting uh, in Kiribati and at the retreat in Bikatawa, they adopted uh, the Bikatawa Declaration. It didn't matter how small the countries were, you heard it. You know, countries like Niue, who have 16 policemen that they sent to, that was valued and, that, and how important each one of us are going forward. I think that's, that's fundamental. And that you're not alone. And you've got to look at, uh, have a long-term view, view rather than short-term gains. And we are diverse across the region. But in the end, we are one family held together by this Pacific Ocean. Ramsey was seen as, as the country's saviour. And I've been struck just being back in Solomons for the last few days at how deeply emotional people still feel about the day when Ramsey first arrived. Because uh, Ramsey ended the cycle of violence, the militancy, the arms patrolling the streets, Ramsey was seen as uh, coming from God. And I think it's uh, a mission that has maintained that level of very high popular support throughout, throughout its life. In the days when we used to do our people surveys, which were quite an extensive survey uh, across all of the provinces, Ramsey continuously registered about 85% of Solomon Islanders' popular support. That's an incredible achievement for an intervention of, of this kind. For me, I was happy that there was, at least there was a response. And there was a space that was going to be given to Solomon Islands once again to, to talk, to talk and maybe eventually, as it happened 14 years, we had this space to rethink how we were going to manage and lead our country and uh, bring peace. In the first hundred days, we arrested Harold Keke and his group, and they were charged by Ben and, uh, and the police. The Malaitan Eagle Force had uh, essentially disbanded. We had a weapons amnesty that led to the handing in of 3,700 weapons, including 660 high-powered uh, weapons. It was moving at a pace that we didn't expect. Uh, I'm sure the Solomon Islanders didn't expect, but 
put us on a path to, uh, to, to real and lasting and success. I think part of the reasons for it being successful was the fact that it was a multinational force. Mm. This wasn't just Australia, this was, you know, I think originally 12 countries with support of the Pacific Island Forum. And I would say, um, played, I think, an enormous role in the acceptance of, of the people of Solomon Islands to see Pacific Islanders. Um, I was, uh, I had a supportive role in, in, the, in the persons group that came uh, and assessed Ramsey uh, about two years after uh, its inception, and that's what uh, struck us is that when we came that the people of the Solomon Islands were, were very comfortable uh, with Pacific Islanders and said look you know, they understand us they know what we think and, um, and so I think that that was one of its greatest strengths. We're always very conscious that we need to earn the community's trust back. Um, the point that I would make is that we've done a lot of work over the past 14 years, we've done a lot of work in the last few years uh, and also the point that I'd make is that since 2011, RSIPF has gradually been transitioning to take full responsibility for policing. We're already out there doing the job. We know that we've got to keep proving ourselves, but we've engaged with community. We've delivered hundreds of community engagement lectures across the, across the country. We've set up crime prevention committees uh, we're working in communities at grassroots levels to earn back that trust. But the reality is the proof is in the work that we do. Uh, every officer in the RSIPF knows that now, and we need to now lead by example, show the country what we're capable of doing and step up to the task. Ramsey meant a lot more than security. I mean, to be sure, the first thing was the restoration of law and order, the re retrieval of guns from the community, the destruction of those guns and weapons. But Ramsey was here also to rebuild the state. The government of Solomon Islands, the elected government of Solomon Islands, didn't, was not in a position to deliver, to provide services uh, that it needed. Um, the health services, the schools were being closed. Public servants were not being paid. Taxes weren't being collected. Um, thugs were running around. The restoration of government services and, and the restoring the rebuilding of government and its institutions was a central part of Ramsey from day one. I think there were lots of areas of the public service, not only the police, but other, other areas that that had really lost staff. People had, had stopped being paid in the tensions. A lot of them were worried about being in Honiara. They'd, they'd just resigned, they'd left, they'd stopped coming to work. Um, so there was a, a really a huge gap um, in, the, in the public sector. And, you know, a lot of the, the government ministries couldn't even tell you how many staff they had. Uh, some of them were still paying ghost employees, people who'd left or who died. Um, so even coming to grips with you know, just what was the size and the shape of, um, of the public sector was a real challenge. We, we messed up, uh, but then I think every country in the world goes through a certain period of time. And, and if we learn from it, I think we can build, we, we can build a better Solomons. Some of the issues we have with law and justice sector are chronic issues. I would have preferred for the chronic issues to have been uploaded to, say, bilateral relationships that are long-lasting relationships. I would have wanted to, to see that, but at the same time, too, I would have um, um, preferred that we say when it is ready to be uploaded on the bilateral and all of that, because sometimes you exit, but we're not ready. A lot of work has been done over the last few years for Pair for um, Ramsey's departure. 
uh, and through our ongoing aid engagement um, and through those lasting partnerships that we have both between the, Ro the Royal Solomon Islands Police Force and first responders across the region, we're confident that Solomon Islands is in a good place. It's important that we, you know, we support neighbours in our region and Solomon Islands is a valued neighbour in our region and, and those lasting partnerships I think are critical to make sure that when a crisis occurs, Australia um, and the region can be the first to respond and to support. I'd like to, to see Solomon Islands stand as a country uh, independently uh, in terms of running its own affairs. We are a resource-rich country. It's about managing the resources that we have in the right way that will benefit our people. And if we could take that approach uh, into the next uh, 20 years, I think we, we, we will um, meet our aspirations of becoming a, a stand-alone independent nation, of course, working with others, uh, but uh, uh, have our own uh, economic foot uh, to, to, to stand on. Well, the palm oil industry in, in the Solomon Islands has been a significant contributor to the, to the local community. We're a significant employer. We have 1,500 employees at the moment. We've been able to establish a very good, sustainable company within the Solomon Islands. We want to expand on what we've got. And we can do that now that we've, we've been able to establish well over the last 10 years. I think the platform is, is set now for us. I think the opportunity is now. You know, it, it, it's hard to, to work in an environment when there's security issues and all these challenges. Um, but I think now the opportunity for us is we've got a stable, safe, secure country. And I think now moving forward is, you know, let's, let's work together and, you know, let's, let's create jobs. Let's focus on creating jobs and creating opportunities for young people. And I think if we can address this question or this challenge, and I think that's going to set us certainly in the right direction as a country, yeah. It's really important for ordinary um, citizens of this country, for all citizens of this country, to feel a personal responsibility to contribute to peace and prosperity here. It's not just a matter for leaders to be making the right decisions and uh, directing people to do the right thing. It's so important for ordinary people, everyday people, good, decent citizens of this country, to be contributing by doing so just in their everyday lives by um, by solving their problems peacefully, by talking to the police, welcoming police into their communities and working together every day to lock in the gains of Ramsey. There's a way we can continue on when Ramsey go away, when Ramsey leaves, we can still continue on because we're equipped when we're little and we know what we want in the future also as peace builders. Mm -hmm.